out. They pull me right back in. Holy crap, everybody. I am here to review the latest episode of Star Wars The Acolyte. This one, episode 5, titled Night. And hot freaking damn. I have had my criticisms of the show. Last week's episode was one of my least favorites uh, of this show so far, if not my least favorite overall. Um, and I've had my criticisms and my ups and downs even amongst the things that I've liked. But holy crap. Uh, you can tell this was the episode that they were waiting for and probably was the entire reason that they wanted to make this series. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to top this episode going forward, but I, you just know that this was the episode that when they went in to pitch the show, when Leslie um, Headland went in to pitch the show, this was the one that she had in mind because uh, this just kicked ass on so many freaking levels and and pays off and all the frustrations that i've had with the show do not go away because of this but it this episode builds off of all the strengths that the show has had so far and uses them so effectively like even some of the stuff where i had frustrations with the setup the payoff here makes it better in hindsight um so yeah it does not erase the frustrating pacing and elements of the show but this was just top-notch, like, A-plus Star Wars from top to bottom, and holy freaking crap, and pays off on the conceit and pitch of this show perfectly. Um, before we get into it, uh, I do want to just apologize if I sound a little bit nasally and if I'm uh, a little bit um, out of it, and, if, and especially if I miss a few things in my review uh, th today. Uh, I am somewhat kind of exhausted, uh, and I think my body is kind of um, feeling it at the moment because uh, the past few days I have been super busy. I've had family uh, come and visit because my movie premiered literally uh, in LA on Monday night. It was a huge premiere. There was so many cool people. Actually, a few people from the Acolyte including Abigail Thorne, um, who was, uh, host the Q and A and is in my movie, um, as well. Um, so yeah. Um, and the actor who played Yord was there. I'm not bragging. It was just like, Oh, it was very cool and very fun. Um, I had family in town. In fact, I had so many much family in town. It's been so busy and hectic, like literally off screen here. I still have the, um, blow up bed that, um, uh, my sister was sleeping on. <laughs> so you can kind of tell uh, that happened. And also the biggest thing is I got engaged to my partner. I, she's my fiance now, which is, uh, kind of wild. I'm to live the rest of my life in that dream with you. So, I think I forgot something. Producer. Producer duty. To say so yeah I'm engaged and I have a movie out uh, and it's been wild but I think my body kind of was like ah oh, you're done you can take a rest now feel all of the stuff that you've been holding back for months so I'm feeling a little bit sick at the moment um, but uh, but feeling fantastic emotionally um, but yeah apologies if I'm, I'm feeling sick also by the way last thing I'll say before we uh, I have to, I'll jump back into Star Wars talk if you have not gotten a chance please 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 uh, consider shining up for Nebula and watching my movie. I am so proud of it. People seem to be really loving it, and, and I am so, so excited that people are watching it, and I'm just excited to see all the reactions of people posting about it and things like that. So, um, yeah, check it out. I'm excited to hear your thoughts if you get a chance to watch it. I just posted a video on my main channel about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing really great. Um, yeah, anyways, enough about me. Let's talk about what you actually came here for, the Star Wars. Um, again, if I miss a couple things, so this was a big packed episode, um, and also I'm not feeling great. Let's get into it. Uh, top to bottom, this episode was just jam-packed. Like, it was only 30 minutes, and I've had problems with 30-minute Star Wars episodes before just pacing-wise. Sometimes they feel too long, sometimes they feel too short, depending on the series that you're watching. Um, this one, like, every second felt packed, and when I, I, I like... I picked up my remote um, to check the time near the end of the episode with my partner, uh, and I was like, wow, it's only been 26 minutes? Like, that felt like an hour, and also like five minutes. It just flew by. So just pacing-wise, this was fantastic. Everything with, what, what are people calling him? Darth Teeth? I guess Kamir, because he gets revealed uh, in, at the end of this episode, but like Darth, Darth Teeth or whatever people were calling him online. The fighting style was so good. That when, I knew we were cooking, 
at the beginning when he headbutts the freaking lightsabers with his uh, mask and it turns them off. I've never seen that before. And then he force pulls the freaking guy onto the lightsaber. Just like, just crap that I've never seen with the force. And it really feels like uh, the, the stuff that they were talking about before the show came out of like, we wanted to do like really new types of fights with Star Wars. They were not joking about that. We got little hints of it in the pilot episode, but here's where we really get to see that show off and Man, is it great. Uh, and the tension throughout the episode is just great. We start off, I was a little worried when we started off the episode with Osha just waking up. I'm like, oh, do we just miss the fight? Like, we're going to wake up after everyone's dead? Thankfully, not the case. Uh, but the tension built really well when we see there's already one Jedi dead, right? The being is like, people could die. And, and that's the one thing I loved about this episode four is at every single moment. When um when Darth Teeth was fighting uh somebody, I'm like, are they going to die here? Because I felt like anyone could die, and the answer is most of them too, um, which broke my heart in a couple cases. Um, but uh, but yeah, you you really felt the absolute tension throughout all of this. Um, and yeah, when Osha just fires at him, and he's just like, girl. What do you think that was going to do? Really? You thought that was good? It's just like, pfft, it was just, it was just great. And he just starts coming after her and like, oh man. Um, and he throws the light, does the lightsaber throw, um, very Star Wars Battlefront-esque uh, of him. Um, and uh, yeah, and then Soul comes in and just saves the day and then just says, go. Um, you know, I, I thought all of that was, was very tense and very great. Um, I did like the tension building when they did get to uh, staying with Yord and, um, and Osha for a minute, going in, finding the bugs, and then attracting them with the light. Very, very clever. And again, I, I had, you know, some people had issues with the way the, the forest stuff. I liked the forest stuff last episode, but some people just like, oh, it's a lot of telling. It's not as much. But it was a great, like, tense of like, oh, you see the bugs are off the trees now. So it's like, oh, we have to go slowly when we know we're being chased by this guy. And then they go back and they sort of twist that bug usage to save them later on was actually, I think, a really really, really couple clever uses of that setup uh, in a really tense, effective way. So loved all of that. Um, uh, Jessica, uh, Jekka, I, I forget her name, but the Padawan character. I adored her this episode. Um, uh, she quickly became one of my favorites of this show. Like I've been adoring her performance a lot. Um, and just her battling um, May and uh, and just taking her down uh, was, uh, was really powerful and just like arresting her. But then when she faced it off against the, the Sith, hot freaking damn uh was that badass when she pulls out the uh the other lightsaber and uses it after he headbutts it uh and uses two just very like oh you got a little ahsoka in you i i love loved that um so all of that was really really fan freaking tastic uh adored that um but everything that darth teeth uh was saying to soul was just go great i love this like throwing it back in the face of the Jedi is like take off your mask stop hiding he's like oh so you can remember mine no 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 um and then when he does kill and again that oh the moment when he kills um uh the Padawan um and he's like she was just a child and Darth Thief says you brought her here I'm like throwing it right back in the Jedi's face yeah yeah he did he put a child in this situation knowing that there was going to be danger um and that's what the Jedi do and uh, I, I thought that that was a great call out. It doesn't make him a good guy, but throwing some of the hypocrisy and him talking about like wanting freedom and wanting to just have the freedom to use power. Because I, I was worried to a degree that there was going to be this um, element of like, oh, is he going to be like, I'm fighting for freedom. I'm fighting for um, I'm fighting for all the like oppressed people. And it's like, oh, we're going to like vilify um, it's like, I'm, I'm fighting for the oppressed people who are oppressed by the Jedi. Um, and I was like, are we going to vilify revolutionary style idea, ide ideology? No. What this guy is saying is I want the freedom to be an authoritarian, to use my freaking power. And that fits Star Wars, like George Lucas's themes going back to the prequels that he's really sort of, I mean, you know, Star Wars has always been anti-fascist, but the very political thinking of, of power and authoritarianism that like he really interjected um in um in the prequel stuff <laughs> slightly less nuanced way but certainly was there um and so i was very very appreciative of that specific line dialogue um uh, so all of that was great and then yord coming in and just throwing down with him again and getting the headbutt and they the both like knocking out their lightsabers but then him getting stabbed i'm like oh you're killing both of them like both like yord was like the little guy who's just like oh you're you're a dumb little himbo guy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you're just a little himbo Jedi, um, and I have problems with you. But I just want to pat you on the head and be like, "Oh, you're doing your best." Um, and so I was sad to see him go. 
actor was just a delight. Uh, same thing with the Padawan. Like, both of them were wonderful. And so you really feel them. Like, I've again, I've had pacing issues with the show. I've had issues with some characterization bits in here and there. But, like, I love these actors. I love these characters so far. And seeing them go in this way was tragic and really did hit hard. Um, I also love that clearly... You know, this guy, uh, um, and Kamir, which, by the way, not a, not a surprising reveal. It's like, yeah, makes sense. That fits. But, man, was his turn terrifying. Like, you could see the, like, like he always had this undercurrent of, like, like sinisterness to him throughout the series um, so far. But here he's, like, just going full on out, and he's killing it. Um, but you just see his, like, anger at the, uh, the fact that May betrayed him. But, like, knowing that, like, I'm in control. I'm not, like, angry because you betrayed me and it, like, harmed me in some way. I'm just more like, man, disappointing. Very disappointing, and I just love that aspect. Um, and just saying, like, I want someone who will follow me. I want a follower. Um, uh, that was just really, really, really cool. Um, tragic at the end when I'm like, oh man, you should have just let Soul kill him, Osha. Just it would have been so much easier uh, for all of you, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, knocks out Soul. Soul promises to uh, tell May, ev or sorry, Osha everything, but then gets knocked out by May. Uh, the scene with Osha and May, it did sort of make me think that like, it, it's one, it's not even necessarily criticism, because the scene was fine, because <coughs> you get like this feeling of like, maybe like, you have been breaking wash, and we know that Soul is hiding something from her, and the Jedi have been hiding something from Osha. So certainly I buy that like may there are two points of views and I do find that intriguing and I thought that like the May getting her over and then going off with Soul I think that that's a good bait and switch and getting Osha some time with Darth Teeth at the end and into next episode I think I think that switch where the two of them will sort of see different ideologies and see what will cause that what how that will maybe change their perspectives and minds um like maybe Osha will go to the dark side maybe May will go to the light side or something like that um uh, I think that, that that works really well. I think that's a good, interesting uh, dynamic to put our two characters in going forward. That being said, the scene between the two of them, as I was alluding to a second ago, uh, it reminded me that like their drama is some of the least interesting to me so far. Like, Osha's dynamic with Soul and the Jedi as an institution was interesting, and Amaze, uh, uh, you know, drama with the, her teacher as much as off-screen as it was. Like, there was some interesting pathos there um, between those dynamics, but May and Osha's dynamic with each other, despite the fact that we got that flashback episode with them as kids, is probably the least interesting dynamic to me at the moment. It's not that it's not interesting and not that there isn't some interesting history there but it's one of the stuff that's least interesting to me um so hopefully uh you know it, it the switcheroo and this tension it will will help to build some of that up a little bit but uh but just because we've seen little of these two characters on screen together um at least in the present day they've got a decent amount of them as kids but in the present day we haven't gotten as much um and so it just hasn't been i haven't connected with it as hard so again not a knock on this episode because the scene itself was good and i think there's potential for there still to build upon that um um, but, uh, but it was just a moment of like, man, uh, not, not as strong as stuff as like the rest of the episode. I think just because of the stuff that came before, it's not bad in and of itself. <coughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, um, that we got going on here. I mean, just fantastic fight choreography all around, um, uh, amazing stuff, heartbreak and the killing of the Jedi. Um, yeah. This was phenomenal. Uh, like I said, I might have missed a couple things because my brain is somewhat Swiss cheese at the moment. Um, but th uh, this was phenomenal. Again, you could tell that this was the episode that they wanted to make. Uh, and has me reigniting my, my excitement for this show. Like, I kind of was waning after last week's episode. I was like, okay, maybe this show isn't going to really be the thing that I want it to be. And yes, I'll still have my issues by the end of the show, I'm sure. Um, but this was just top-notch Star Wars. And I, it makes me very excited. Uh, to see where the show's going to go in its final, I think, three more episodes left. Uh, anyways, love to hear your thoughts down below. Did you like this? Oh, uh, two last things. I, I The shot where he's, like, running at May and just, like, get the, the close-ups on his face was also good. And also the moment where he, like, comes running out of the woods at Osha, also great. Or, not Osha, the Padawan. Those two moments, fantastic. Like, just, just filmmaking moments were really great throughout all of this. I love the techniques used. Sorry, a little aside there. Um, but speaking of filmmaking techniques, before I finish, please, if you uh, are in, at all interested, please check out my movie. Um, we're hoping it's a pilot for a TV series, uh, and the more support it gets, the more people watching it gets, the more people getting to share it around, because we don't have a huge marketing budget, it, so the more people can share it, the better. Um, uh, we'll hopefully get potential for me to be able to make more and fulfill my dreams. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're at all interested, please check it out. Use the link below. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear your 
your thoughts on this episode of Star Wars The Acolyte and beyond all of that, I'm going to sleep and slumber for a week uh, and uh, and take care of myself and my fiance because uh, she's also feeling a little bit under the weather. But I hope you all, my friends, live long and prosper. Man, I just said my fiance. That's a wild thing. <laughs>